well, I think even before I went to this last uh, summit in, in Dalton, was that there hadn't been any discussion in terms of the solution. You know, you've mentioned several. Mm -hmm. I've not heard that discussion take place. Why do you imagine that is? Well, I, I think sometimes the reality is let's say we have a lot of vested interest inside the room. Uh, in that one, so I think that may have been one for, for the particular meetings, but I think if you took everybody in that room, I think everybody from their vantage point is pursuing some solutions. It's just, in fairness, some of those solutions may cross lines with other folks in the rooms, to be, to be honest. But do I think that, uh, you know, I'll speak on behalf of what we're doing, are we making concerted efforts to try and help with that? If there's a lot of things I said here, absolutely. Do I think probably a lot of our competition is doing similarly? No doubt. Uh, the question is, can we do more in certain areas, I, namely in the training? I think we're trying to find areas that we get the right return on that investment that's taking place. And um, I think the, the one thing that uh, probably does make sense is having everybody look at the issue a bit more holistically. And I, the one piece I, that I, I probably bristle at a little bit is it's not just a numbers and a training solution. It's a much more complex solution. There is a very viable solution, but it's not just simply let's throw more money at more people at it. I think we have to think a little bit differently to get to the right answer long term. I've interviewed a lot of retailers touching on this subject, and quite honestly, I've seen some that have come up with very clever and unique yeah. solutions in their little part of the world. Yeah. And just and I think that's the nature of entrepreneurs is I got a problem I'm gonna solve it. I'm not gonna wait for somebody adult to knock on my door and say, here's the answer. Well, I agree, and I don't think that means we don't have an obligation, but I don't think that means the manufacturer bears all responsibility either. And I think there's, there's an old line I've heard is necessity is the mother of all invention. And I think that's, once again, if you take the independent entrepreneur, they're going to be the most creative. And I think when I talk to a lot of the retailers out there, once again, I don't see many retailers that are truly losing sales as a result. I think they're being very clever and innovative, whether that's training to get, you know, essentially get the guys that are more multi-product uh, capable in installation, whether that's recruiting and finding people from other industries to bring in, uh, whether that's motivation and trying to kind of drive that camaraderie. Every entrepreneur has their own formula, and that's one of the things that makes the floor covering industry so great. So I don't think there is a one-size-fits-all solution. And as I said before, I think where you are in the country and what, product, what channel you're in plays a big role in it as well. So I, th I think it's, I, I, the entrepreneur is live and well in our business, and I don't think they're going to let this, in, this issue, per se, uh, keep them from the profitable uh, execution of their yeah. business. Is there a solution? that this leadership council can come up with? I mean, or, or, or is it simply developing tools to put in the hands of entrepreneurs so they can solve it, you know, using these tools in their own way? Well, you know, let's ask ourselves, just something as simple as what are best practices? If you have a recruitment issue, just getting more folks into your pool, what are the 10 best things retailers have done? If you have a training issue, what are the 10 best ideas that you've pursued? If you essentially have a mistake and a follow-up issue and a callback issue, what are some of the you know, ideas that have been pursued? Uh, I'll tell you, I've, I, if, if you sit back and listen, you'll find that there's a lot of really creative people out there. And I think I, I give uh, essentially a lot of credit for driving awareness to the issue like we're talking about here. I think the next piece is, is let's find what those uh, answers are. And once again, it's not one size fits all, but let's make sure we communicate those answers back en masse. Uh, to those that are out there living it each day. But the form, what form do you see this solution? I mean, I think originally, and I don't know that anybody told me this, but just what I gathered from these various meetings, that, okay, we can come up with a solution, put some dollars and cents on it, and at least turn out the tools or at least make some headway in solving this, this problem. Um, what form will the solution from this group take you? Well, I, I think it's, quite frankly, if we're saying that it's a communication, first and foremost, to make sure that we get the information out, 
I think there's pretty cost-effective ways to accomplish that. The first, you have to develop the content to communicate back out to the, because it's largely to the retail trade and the contracting trades that are out there. Um, but once again, there's going to be training initiatives, and the training initiatives are going to be in certain categories. And there might be some, you know, more global recruitment initiatives. I think we heard a lot about doing in some regional areas some training into the vocational schools in the area. So once again, I, I really go back and I don't think it's a one-size-fits-all solution. I think we have to look at the areas that are that have the most acute problem, and I think we should be looking both us as the industry as well as the, the uh, uh, dealers and service providers in those markets of how we can better craft solutions. Because I think if you're looking at certain areas of the country, uh, what, what would be a bigger tragedy in finding one where we actually have too many installers in some areas of the country and we're doing recruitment efforts when we have areas that we're just starving for them? So it's, I think you just make sure that you, whatever your solution is, it's tactical in the way that you implement it. What, what are your thoughts on retailers and contractors hiring installers as opposed to using subs? And, and they tell me that back, I don't know, 60s, 70s, that was the norm. <laughs> I've learned one thing in this business is uh, the retailers will do what makes the most sense for them and I don't profess to have an answer of knowing what's best for them in that situation. But uh, once again, I think you, you could have two retailers in the same market that have totally divergent views and the realities in this business on that issue, they may both actually be right. So once again, I think that's, that makes sense of which individual dealer is looking at their particular business model. Um, you're familiar with the install program, mm -hmm. union program, sure. commercial, mm -hmm. commercially oriented, sure. working in c certain markets. Their their model is basically uh, they have a contract with an, with a with with a contractor. Mm -hmm. um, installers are paid a certain amount based on on their on their level. There's continuous training. That's that's included in the in the price that the contractor charges. Is that a model that you think would work in some areas? I'm not talking about union, I'm talking mm -hmm. about just that model where uh, higher wages, fringe benefits, uh, et cetera. Is that a model you think would work? I, I, I think it can, but once again, I think at the end of the day, I, I'm kind of like the previous question, if we look at it, is uh, our, uh, our customers and our dealers uh, will make the determination of what makes sense for their business. Okay. And I think that there, you'll find some dealers that that'll be the right answers and others that will say that is not the answer for my business. And I think that's part of being an entrepreneur. Is that, uh, but I do think for those that have done it, I have heard a lot of good things about it, of those that it's really helped them with a lot of the challenges they've had. But I think that's a, a unique viewpoint of a business owner to make that determination, not for a manufacturer. I've had people tell me that, you know, if I was 20 years younger, I'd go open up work rooms around the country. Yeah. That seems like a viable solution to me. What do you think? Well, I, I think, let's go back to the basics of it. I think there is a very good wage and income to be made in installation. And I think, that, you know, we can all sit here and say the one thing we don't have is too many hardworking, quality, diligent installers. We have a lot of them, but we've never had too many. So I think that really puts us in a great position where uh, for a young guy coming, a gal coming into this business that wants to work hard, I think that... Tucson, and this is Top Floor TV. So from, from the standpoint of, you know, kind of where the issue is going, that opportunity is still going to be there 10 years from now, 20 years from now, and 30 years from now. And we'll probably still be, you know, I don't, it'll be two other people talking here 30, 30 years from now uh, about this challenge. But uh, once again, I think as, as long as we have independent entrepreneurs and workrooms, as you said, that are providing these services, I'm not really worried about the ability of us to get properly, product properly installed in the homes. I think we just have to kind of look at this a little bit more cleverly maybe than we have in the past. Just in conclusion, let's, let's sum up. Let me just ask you, you know, We've talked about this problem, I guess, forever, mm -hmm. but uh, more intensely in the last three years. Sum up your view of the problem and solutions to the problem. I would say the simple one is that we all have a stake in the problem. Um, and, and, and there is a challenge out there. It, it is a problem. Uh, I think secondly is that we all have to look at what we can do from our own vantage point, whether you're a manufacturer, service provider, whatever it may be, and I think there are going to be unique and clever solutions implemented, and once again I go back and it goes by product, it goes by geography, and it goes by channel. 
and I think that you will find different unique answers within each of them. And I think from the, you know, if you look at the end of the day, the, the floor covering retailers, installers, workrooms, etc., I think they are going to continue to do what's in their best interest and take advantage of those services and options that are out there. I don't, you know, and so it's, it's as, as, as much as what it is what it isn't, I don't think it's a prescriptive solution of we just need more people and we just have to do more training. I think it is much more complex than that, but I think we've actually probably done a bit more than a lot of people realize. We collectively as the industry, and I think we just have to continue on those paths uh, with making these products, as I said before, easier to install, less stressful to install, easier to train to install, and it's hopefully a little bit more less goof-proof and, you know, essentially tougher to make a mistake than the past. If we can do those collectively, no doubt I think we can really, you know, nudge the stone far on this issue for the industry. Thanks so much, Tom. Thanks for joining us. Always good to be with you, Dave. Thank you. You've been talking with Tom Lake, and this is Talk.